Ah, uh, how fabulous. Well, thank you everyone so much for being on this call with me. I know it's a Tuesday, middle of the week. We are going to get pumped up. This is going to be filled with energy. If you know me, you know, like I'm a bubbly bowl of energy always. <laughs> so this is going to be filled with energy. I'm so excited for everyone to be here. Now I'm just going to ask that everyone make sure to keep your mics muted. Um, at the end, there will be a Q and a session, but, but like throughout the duration of the actual like presentation masterclass here, let's keep our mics muted. I am going to be very interactive. So I want you guys to interact in the chat. Um, I'll be asking you questions. So bring the energy, participate. But yeah, so this is how to get started investing in real estate in 2024. Now, real estate is a hot topic. Um, it has been for the last literally forever, really. <laughs> um, and, you know, now we're in some interesting times and people are, you know, wondering how do they get started investing in real estate? So that's what we're going to be going over today. So first of all, congrats on just showing up, okay? Because there are so many people that keep saying that they want to get started investing in real estate or they want to do this and they want to do that, but they don't actually show up for themselves, okay? So the fact that you are here, you're showing up, you're putting in the work, that's freaking huge. And I'm so proud of you and everyone just like give yourself a pat on the back. Um, I know, super cheesy, <laughs> but seriously, that's huge. And that's the first step. <laughs> Okay, so who am I? My name is Olivia Tati. You probably found me through social media on Instagram or YouTube or whatever platform, who knows? But I am a recovering engineer and we'll go a little bit more into my story before, I mean, later. But yes, yeah, so recovering engineer, but currently real estate investor and coach. I do have a seven figure portfolio. I literally just got under contract on another property yesterday or two days ago, which is very exciting. Um, I'm a serial traveler. So I know it even says 52 plus I've actually been to 53 countries going to my 54th later this year. Um, I'm an interior designer, YouTuber, content creator, digital nomad, instigator of fun. Some people say <laughs> about me. Um, but really what I want to hone in on is it's important to learn from someone who is currently doing it, not someone who has just done it before. Because real estate, if you guys have been like at least following real estate for the last few years, the market has changed drastically. So that means that the strategies are also changing. And it's so important to be in the know, in the now, in the know, current, in the communities where people are actually investing. Because, um, sorry, could someone, I think someone has their sound on. Let's give you a mute. Fabulous. But yeah, it is so important to be learning from someone who is currently doing it. Hey guys, I'm not sure who that is, but could you please make sure that you're sound is on mute. That would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yes, it is so important to just learn from someone who is currently doing it and not someone who has done it in the past. Okay. So I, if you don't know me, I've been featured on some really big real estate platforms like bigger pockets and real estate Robinsons. I actually quit my job just off of one rental. It is possible guys. <laughs> um, but, and I'm not, you know, everyone has their own journey, but it just comes to show like, literally there are so many ways to do real estate. And what I am going to be showing y'all today are the ways that I'm seeing is working right now for newbies, right? Not for like seasoned investors who have 50,000 properties, right? Like for newbies just getting started. Okay. So I saw this on threads the other day <laughs> and it said, Hey millennials, what's the biggest lie you were told growing up? Let's see what it said. It said, work hard and you'll be rewarded that if I work hard and go to school, I'll be able to own a home and raise a family with said job, that hard work pays off. Nobody told me that hard work pays off or nobody told me hard work pays off in the form of more work. And this is something that I struggled with so hard in corporate America because I, you know, if you know me, I'm a pretty hard worker. Like I like, I enjoy working hard. I like putting, you know, like accomplishing big things and stuff like that. But it didn't actually get me closer to where I wanted to go. It just like resulted in more work, right? Or it resulted in getting messed up on promotions or things like that. And I was like, there has to be a different way. There has to be another way. And there really is, okay? So just some groundskeeping here. So this masterclass is going to be for you if you're chugging along at your corporate job or in your like business and you just feel like your soul is dying, you're exhausted, you're just struggling. Maybe you hate trading eight hours or more. I know for me, like I was sometimes working 12, 14 hour days for a paycheck and want a more passive way to build long-term wealth. Or maybe you just want to spend more time traveling, making memories with the people that you love 
Or maybe you like your job. You actually enjoy your job. You enjoy your career. It's good. But you do want to be able to supplement your income and maybe go remote or maybe just like not have to work as many hours in your job right now or in your career, in your business, and be able to supplement that with real estate income. Or maybe this masterclass is just for you. If you know that you were meant to be doing something more in life, but you just don't know where to start, okay? Now, this masterclass is not going to be for you if you hate the idea of building long-term wealth through real estate. Now, I don't think that's anyone here because you wouldn't have joined, right? <laughs> or maybe if you're looking to do rental arbitrage and not actually own the property, this probably isn't going to be the right masterclass for you. Or maybe you're looking to use like subject to or seller financing or looking to purchase commercial real estate. And also, if you're not willing to get a little bit uncomfortable to reach your goals, because anything, anything worth doing, you have to get a little bit uncomfortable, okay? So I'm just going to say this now, start before you're ready, okay? If I had waited to start before I was ready to get started investing in real estate, I would still be sitting in my corporate job today. Right, Because a lot of the time, we just keep pushing back our goals, pushing back our goals, not setting deadlines, not jumping in. Because when you jump in, that is when you know you are committed. That is when you know that you are there to change your life. So surround yourself with like-minded people who are trying to accomplish the exact same things that you're trying to do. Because that's going to put you in the energy to actually get to where you want to go. And I've seen that so many times. I've seen that with myself. I've seen that with my students, which is just such, and it's incredible that literally just getting into the energy of other people can do that. Okay, so a little bit about me, how it started. So I used to be a corporate oil and gas engineer. And if you know me, I'm usually in fun, bright, colorful dresses. <laughs> and so that was not me for a while. I was waking up at 3.45 in the morning, commuting to oil and gas platforms, commuting to like about an hour or two away to go to work, trying to get my workout in, just feeling exhausted at the end of every single day. I got a bachelor's in chemical engineering, a master's in engineering and technology management. And for the longest time, I thought that like, that's just what life was. That's what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. And so when I graduated from grad school, I was actually $25,000 in credit card debt. And I remember I got my corporate job and I was like, oh my gosh, six figures. This is amazing. I'm going to be like rolling in it, right? A year later, I still hadn't paid off my credit card debt. And I was like, what's, what's happening? Like, There's clearly something that I don't understand here about finances, about investing. Like I should figure this out. And so, and it was so funny at this time. Well, not funny, but at this time, COVID layoffs were happening during like at my job, at my corporate job. And it was so interesting because there were so many people who, you know, their whole retirement plan was based off of their job. It was based off of their 401k. Their 401k had dipped substantially during this time. So they were having to delay uh, retiring and they were terrified of getting laid off from their corporate job. I at that time was like, honestly, you can lay me off and I, I'll take a package and run. But unfortunately, you know, they didn't do that. That's OK. But, <laughs> but that's that's the mindset that I was in. And that's where I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to pay off my credit card debt. And I am going to find some way out of engineering because I just don't think that that's for me. And so here's actually a sticky note from June 2017. So this was when I was in my internship as an engineer. This is before I even started working full time. And it's so funny because I wrote things I could be as well as an engineer. And it's so funny because you can see like I hadn't really fully embodied that at the end of the day, I didn't really want to be an engineer. Right? And you got things here like travel blogger, inspirational speaker, like um, interior decorator, which is funny because I have an interior design business now. But if you know in your in your soul that you were meant to be doing something else, like listen to that. Trust me, listen to that. So I was in $25,000 worth of credit card debt. And at the time, I decided to get my real estate license. So I didn't know anything about real estate investing, but I got my real estate license and started listening to the Bigger Pockets podcast, which is a really popular real estate investing podcast. And I was hooked completely hooked. I was like, this is the way, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay off all my credit card debt, get my first property, get under contract, start building up my portfolio and quit my corporate job. And that's exactly what I did. I went to freaking work. <laughs> I buckled down. I was an engineer and a part-time real estate agent. So I'm like doing engineering through all throughout the day. And then whenever I could showing houses, doing this, doing that, selling properties. Finally, after eight months, I paid off all of my credit card debt and I got under contract on my first investment property, which was huge. And we'll go over actually all the details of that first investment property later on in this masterclass. But I went to freaking work. 
And after a while, I actually was able to quit my corporate job. Now, it is so important to call your shot. So this is from March 24th, 2021. I was traveling in Mexico at the time. And it's so funny because I literally write here, like, this is firing me up. I want to get my first duplex, rent out the other side, Airbnb out my side, get Kiana, who's my dog, a passport and go travel. And it's so funny because literally a year after that, I was in Portugal for three months with my dog, quit my corporate job, traveling the world. <laughs> so it's so important to write it down. It's so important to call your shot. And that's exactly what I did, right? So for the last two years, I've pretty much been nomading around the world with financial freedom, location freedom, and most importantly, time freedom, right? Like I have full control now over what my day looks like. I have full control over what I'm doing on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. So why is it, why do you want to be a real estate investor? I want you guys to drop it in the chat right now. Like, why are you here? Why did you sign up for this masterclass? What is, you know, pushing you to want to be a real estate investor? Freedom. Yep. Who else? More time at home with kids. Yep. What else? Drop it in the chat. Legacy. Yep. Build wealth and help your parents retire. I love that one. Long-term wealth building. More time at home with the kids. In control of my time. Okay. Love this. Love this. Freedom. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So, for most people, right, it's going to be family, time, money, and freedom, right? Like everyone, I look at just looking at our results over there, right? Like that seems to be the general consensus. Here's the thing. Your why sucks. Why? It's just not deep enough. That is superficial, okay? Like everyone says, I want freedom. I want, what are you actually going to do with this freedom? If you get to the point where you are financially free, what are you actually going to do with it? People say they want more money. People say they want more time. Why are they still not where they want to go? Because they haven't really honed in on their why. There's something stopping them. Stop, something's just not quite hitting to get them over the line. So now I say that this is superficial, right? Because superficial is the meaning, the definition of superficial is shallow. So cursory mean cursory mean lacking in depth or solidity. Superficial implies a concern only with surface aspects or obvious feature. Okay. So I want you guys to like, if there's anything, anything you take from this masterclass is to think really deep. Think, think so clear about why you want to really invest in real estate. What are you going to do with this extra time? What are you actually, how are you going to spend your days? What are the things that you want to go buy or invest in? Or what experiences do you want to go do? Make it so clear. Get so clear on what your actual goal is. Write it down. Write every single detail down because that is what is actually going to push you to reach your goals. Be authentic. Like what fears are keeping you up at night? What regrets do you want to avoid? I know for me, like there's just so much that I really wanted to do in life. Like I think I'm going to impact millions of people, right? And that was not going to be possible in my corporate engineering job. Like what legacy do you want to have? Make sure, like if there's anything you do, write those down, okay? <laughs> and what would you do? Like, what would your life look like if you didn't start investing? Where would you be in two years? Where would you be in five years? Can anyone, if anyone wants to share, like what would your life look like if you did not start investing right now? Where would you be in five years? Come on, someone share. <laughs> the same. Yeah, exactly the same. In exactly the exactly same spot. Still sad. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's like no matter how hard you work for someone else, you are always still working for someone else. Okay. So this is a fake dude. This is Joe, right? Joe has been thinking of getting started investing in real estate for 12 years. He's still working his corporate job. He is still unsatisfied, but was too afraid to take the leap. Do not be like Joe. Okay. So this is one of my, this is one of, he was, this is Javier. He literally was one of the first people. This was before I even had a coaching program or anything like that. He signed up for a one on one call with me. And like I was kind of like spearheading at the time, getting it started investing in real estate, corporate, putting my corporate job, all of that stuff. And Javier, it's so fun. I just saw him at a conference yesterday. 
He was like, I officially quit my corporate job, now full-time entrepreneur, three weeks in, investing in real estate. Like this could be you too. Or, and if it may be as an entrepreneur, it may be doing something else. It may be being a stay-at-home mom with your kids, whatever that looks like for you, okay? So what's actually holding you back right now from investing? What's holding you back? Pop in cash flow, debt. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. Not having enough knowledge or understanding. Yep, finding the right property. Okay, having too many options. Yep, lack of knowledge, 100%. 100%, yeah. So here is what I typically hear with investors or like wannabe investors, right? Like you're paralyzed. You don't know the first steps you need to take. Maybe you have too many options and decisions and can't figure out what path to take, right? You're terrified of making a big mistake. You have no idea what a good deal actually even looks like, right? And if I could summarize all of these answers, usually it's knowledge, money, and mindset around it. So this is kind of, this is where, where we're at today, right? Like today, kind of sad, these are the things we're missing. It's the knowledge, it's the money part, it's the mindset in order to get over that hump to the financial stability, to the optionality, to the time freedom. And here's the thing too. So I'm a full-time entrepreneur, right? I love being a full-time entrepreneur. I have both my real estate investment portfolio and I have like other businesses as well. The thing that I love about real estate is it runs even if I don't show up, right? That's the beautiful thing about real. I love entrepreneurship as well. Do not get me wrong. But the beautiful thing about real estate is that's your safety net. That's what keeps you afloat regardless. Okay, so now make sure, please, please, please make sure that you stay until the end because at the end, I'll be giving you an exclusive gift and there will be a live Q&A. So you'll be able to hop off a of mute. We can answer questions, go over everything. It's gonna be great, okay? <laughs> okay, so number one, the one thing, the first thing that's holding a lot of people back is knowledge, Okay. There are too many options. I know someone wrote in there too many options. I think that was Priscilla, right? So do I do short-term rentals? Do I do house flipping? Do I do new construction, long-term rentals, land flipping, house hacking? Which one do I do, right? There's so many different ways. And I'm going to tell you guys this. Every single way works, okay? You just have to pick one. But every single way works, okay? <laughs> um, and here's the thing. People are also going to tell you, you can buy properties with other people's money and no money down. And yes, you can. And I purchased properties with other people's money and no money down. But like, be wary. The money has to come from somewhere. And I'm going to swear, but like, if shit hits the fan, do you feel comfortable paying people back? Do you feel comfortable that you can handle it? And this is why I always say with that first property, try and get it yourself if you can. And even if it's, and maybe it's partnering with like a significant other or whatever, but try and get that, and, or not with a significant other, but maybe it's partnering with a family member or something like that. But like, try and get that first property yourself because you're going to build up your confidence later on to go crush it. But that first property, those are your training wheels and you want to make sure you even like this stuff, okay? <laughs> but you just need to get your first deal. Everyone's thinking about how do I scale? How do I scale? Just get your first property first, okay? Before you even think about scaling, let's just get our first property <laughs> or first investment property. Okay, so there are two main strategies that we're gonna be covering today that I see work best for newbies getting started investing in real estate. Now, what is your biggest expense right now? Can someone, can, yeah, put it in the chat. Like, what is your biggest expense right now? And like personal expense. Rent, rent, yep, yep, that was mine too. Rent or mortgage, yep. Travel, girl, I feel that. <laughs> I love travel, but it, it is not cheap. Although actually I am coming out with a whole program later next month that is about how to travel. It's not even travel for cheap, but that's, I digress. We'll get to that later. <laughs> but yes, mortgage, rent. Yeah, that sounds, I love it. 2 a.m. shopping at Amazon. <laughs> oh my gosh. But so this was posted on Instagram like a couple months ago, but it, it was so funny because it was like, you can permanently change the price of one item to $1. What is it? For most people, rent, mortgage, houses, houses, do you know that's funny, but land, home, rent, rent, mortgage. So this is a problem for everyone. And this was the problem for me, okay, as well. I remember I was working my corporate job. I told you guys, I was making six figures. And I was like, why is most of my money going towards rent and going towards bills and things like that, okay? <laughs> so 
the first strategy that we're going to be talking to is house tech. Oh my gosh, taxes. Okay, that's, a, you know, we're not going to go over taxes in depth, but like just an FYI, real estate investing, specifically investing is a phenomenal way to reduce your taxes. <laughs> um, but there are two main strategies that I see working best where the first one we're going to go over is house hacking, which is honestly my favorite one. Even the property that I've gotten here in Colorado is also like a luxury house hack, which I'm very lit up about. Um, but yes, we will house hacking. So what the heck even is house hacking? It's when you buy a property, live in part of it, and then rent other parts of it out. So that way your tenants or your guests can help you pay your mortgage and even potentially pay for your entire mortgage and cash flow on top of that. So BPCon, it's like a really big real estate investing conference, like 3,000 people go there, all of the top real estate investors in the world. I went to it last year. And the number one form of real estate investing suggested by multi-millionaire, like multi, multi, like not even like 10 million, like 10 millionaire, I guess, but like 100 millionaire investors was house hack. Okay. Now, now there are four like these are the four best and like most basic, I guess, strategies that you can use in order to house hack. So for some people, it's roommates. I've got four students right now who are doing the roommate strategy or a loft or a basement. This is the exact strategy that I'm using here in Colorado is a lot. This is the basement strategy or an accessory dwelling unit or actually getting a zoned multifamily property. And then once you get more in bonds, maybe you're an entrepreneur, you can even house hack using office spaces, things like that. But basically, you are renting out parts of your property to other people so that it actually covers your mortgage and your living expenses. Now, the benefits of housing, house hacking, right? It reduces your house hacking. I mean, it reduces your housing cost. So instead of paying that rent, you're actually, you could be potentially paying nothing, maybe even making money on top of that. Also, you get start getting like the a taste of what almost passive income like looks like. It really, and I say almost because really no income is fully passive. Like stocks to an, an extent, if you put it in like a Roth IRA and it's just like mutual funds, all of that stuff is more passive, but then you also don't get as high of a return. So, you know, it's a tit for tat there. Also low entry point. I purchased my first investment property with like zero dollars from my actual savings account, you know, and I have a student right now who's under contract on a property, zero dollars out of like, she's literally bringing, she's bringing zero money to the table. Appreciation also is huge. Okay. Everyone who purchased in like 2020, right. It's or 2019 is sitting pretty right now because property values went up equity pay down. Here's the thing you can buy a property for. 10,000, 15,000, maybe even more, maybe it's a hundred thousand dollars, but then the rest of the loan that you get, that is getting paid off by someone else. That is getting paid off by the rents that you're bringing in. Tax benefits. I know someone said taxes was their biggest expenses. There are so many incredible benefits when it comes to real estate investing. I literally like paid like nothing. I think, I, I think I may have gotten a refund last year just because of real estate investing and making sure that you have the right tax professionals who know what they're doing there. And then also it's just a low barrier to entry for landlording and entrepreneurship. So if you aren't an entrepreneur right now, like it is just like an easy way to see if you even like it. Okay. And you also have more lenient regulations around it if you live on the property. Okay. So how much, I know we kind of already talked about this, but <laughs> how much do you actually need to put down to buy an investment property? Can you drop it in the chat? How much do you think? Or how much did you think before this masterclass? <laughs> Five twenty percent. Okay, yeah. Who else? Love it. Uh, love that you did three point five on the first. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. So if you're house hacking, you can put as little as zero to five percent down on your first investment property. And actually not even on your first investment property. You can do it on your second, your third, your fourth, if you keep house hacking. <laughs> so I have a student who, she, before she joined me, she actually had a primary residence that she put 20% down on. Then her next property, Devlin, this is Devlin. I love Devlin. She's fabulous. But in her next property, she went 3% down. And now she's off to another property that she's buying all within the coaching program um, that she's getting for 3.5% down. So you don't need to be putting 20% down. Now, I'm not going to say that like putting 20% down is a bad thing, y'all, because there's a trade-off to everything. But for people, if you don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank, this is such a great way for the everyday person to get started investing in real estate. That's exactly how I got started too. Okay, so the second thing that is holding people back, right, is money. So 
this is, and I know there's a lot of information on here and we're going to touch on each of the different loans a little, but here are some of the loans you can actually get using those low down payments. So if you are buying a single family home and maybe you're splitting it off in different ways, whatever that looks like. So that's what I am doing right now. So I'm buying actually a single family home that has already been separated off. So I can go with a conventional loan for this. Or you could go an FHA loan where you only have to put as little as 3.5% down. If you're a veteran or your like spouse has veteran you know, benefits, you can put as little as 0% down. NACA loan. So this one is freaking cute. If I had known about NACA when I first got started investing in real estate, I would have gone with this one. And I have students doing this right now, which is incredible. Or if you're a dentist or a doctor or something like that, you can use a young professional loan. There's also an FHA 203k loan. So now like, with the NACA and FHA 203k loan, you can actually roll the costs of renovations into the loan, which is freaking huge. <laughs> okay, like that is huge. You can literally roll that into the loan. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to put like less than 20% down on a home because of PMI. Like everyone is terrified of PMI. Guys, if your mortgage is $2,400 and that's including PMI and you're making $3,000 on the property, do you care about PMI? No, <laughs> it's a numbers game, right? So don't like, don't just fear PMI because everyone tells you to fear PMI, right? Like it's all a numbers game at the end of the day. So other ways you can actually decrease your cash out of pocket are using a 401k loan, maybe even down payment assistance. You can use your IRA. You could use a loan or a gift from a family member too. Oh, PMI. So PMI is private mortgage insurance. So if you put less than 20% down on it, using some loans, they like will charge you a little bit like of an extra insurance. And usually like my PMI on my first property was $110 a month. Like not a big deal, <laughs> you know? And so a lot of people get terrified of this idea of PMI when it's at the end of the day, it's all a numbers game. Um, so I'm actually going to show you the numbers on my, this is my very, very first investment property that I purchased. And this was, I was brand spanking you, didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I think I can figure this out. Right? <laughs> so my purchase price was $399,000. And if anyone, this is in New Orleans. Okay. So you can find $399,000 duplexes in New Orleans. Um, and this was, and to be fair too, I got out of my comfort zone. I went to a part of town that I wasn't like, 100% didn't know completely, but I knew that house hacking was going to be my means. And it was like, ended up being the best decision ever in the world. So my, I went FHA, my down payment was 3.5%. I, that, so I had to come with $13,965 down and my closing costs were $10,000. Also at the time, guys, I had $25,000 in the bank. That is all I had. I finally paid off my credit card debt and I had $25,000 in the bank. So all in, I was going to be $23,965. But remember how I got my real estate license so I got realtor commission that I actually rolled into it. So I got $8,000 back. And then I also got seller credit. So this was a new construction. And the and guys, right now, interest rates are high. Sellers are giving credits. Like we have, buyers do kind of have the upper hand a little bit because we can negotiate in this kind of market, which you will not be able to do once interest rates come down. Um, and then instead of using my like cash that I'd saved in my bank account, I instead got a 401k loan out because I had like $50,000 in my 401k. I was like, I think I can put this to good use. And it's so funny. I posted this, a store, um, something on my Instagram the other day. And everyone was like, you know, doing a 401k loan is really irresponsible. I'm like, is it? Because literally a month later, my 401k, like everyone's 401ks drop. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's once again, it's all a numbers game. And if your money, if you can get a higher return on your investment in somewhere else, go do that. And the cool thing about a 401k loan is you're literally taking a loan from yourself. So you're putting your money, like the interest that you're paying, it gets paid just back into your 401k. <laughs> um, so I came to the table with $0 from my bank account, which is awesome, right? So there's so many different creative ways that you can do this. Now, let's actually look at what the monthly numbers and like the cash flow looks like. So at the time, I had, I think my lease was by $1,800 a month plus utilities and stuff like that. So I actually went from an $1,800 rent payment to a mortgage of $2,400. So a little nerve wracking. I was like, what am I doing? Like, is this smart? I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um, so $2,400 a month mortgage and then utilities and expenses for both units. Cause this is a duplex ended up being about $500 a month. That's what I was looking at. So total expenses about $2,900 a month. 
I then rented out one of the units as a short-term rental. So on Airbnb, and sometimes I do midterm rental, sometimes I do short-term rental, but it also gives me flexibility because I have like friends and family who like to come stay. So I can block it off when I want to for them. It's really great, especially in New Orleans, right? So I'm making $41.50 a month on one unit. And then my total expenses are $2,900. So I go from paying $1,800 plus a month to now living completely for free, right? Because my expenses are covered and cash flowing $1,250 a month. So that's an extra $15,000 in my bank account, right? But on top of that, because I'm not paying rent, the money saved from pay not paying rent is about $21,600. $100. So that's another $36,000 of disposable income in the bank account. Guys, when I say like, like when I got this first property, I was like, I am a genius, even though people have been doing this for years. <laughs> right? I was like, this is incredible. Like, oh my goodness. How did I not know this? Right? So everyone obviously is, we're in a high interest rate. Well, we're actually not like if you go back to the 1980s, that's when we were in high interest rates. To be fair, though, you know, property prices were a lot lower back then. But in the last like 10 years, yeah, you, we are in a higher interest rate environment. However, that also means that as us as buyers, we have more leverage. Like I literally just put in an offer and got accepted on an offer on a property that was a hundred uh, $180,000 lower than the purchase price. <laughs> like you cannot do that when interest rates are low, okay? <laughs> so higher interest rates really does mean more opportunity. Okay, so I'm, I literally pulled up a property that's on the market right now. So this is in Houston, Texas. I'm not sure if anyone here is on Houston, is in Houston. I know we, I feel like every time I'm on here, there's someone from Houston, but like this property is in Houston, Texas. It's a duplex. It's got three bedrooms on either side two bathrooms. Now for this, I'm just, we're going to pretend we're going to make up a person, right? Oh my gosh, love that. <laughs> Girl, buy it. <laughs> um, but we're going to pretend, let's say you're, um, you want to do the rent by the room strategy. Okay. Let's say you want to do the rent by the room strategy. You've decided that this is the strategy that works for you. You're going to make a good amount of cash flow. So what we're going to look at, and let's say you're going to furnish it. Okay. How much are, is the rent by the room going for? So I went and looked at properties in the area. We've got $800 a month, $1,500 a month, $950. Okay, so we're going to say an average, we're on the low end, about $900 a month per room, right? Okay, let's actually look at the numbers. Purchase price, $449,000. Down payment, if we're going FHA, and this isn't even if we go NACA, right? Because NACA, you can go 0%. This is, let's say we're doing FHA because we felt like doing FHA. We're doing $15,000 down. A lot of the time, especially in this high interest rate market, right? We can actually get a lot of our closing costs covered because especially builders, builders are always giving incentives. So I love working with like new constructions and builders. So at current, the current interest rate is about 6.85% that you're looking at a $3,200 a month mortgage. Let's say utilities and expenses for both units are $400 a month. So we're looking at about $3,600 a month in expenses, right? So income, this isn't from one unit, but from um, five, let's say you rented out five bedrooms, that's $4,500 a month. Your cash flow could be $899 a month. But remember, you're living for free now. So that payment, that payment that you guys all said was, you know, the biggest thing that you're spending on, you could be saving that and now putting that towards something else, putting that towards investments, putting that towards whatever that looks like. Now you're living for free and you're getting cash flow on the property, Okay. And then, okay, so I literally, I just wanted to throw this in here. And this is where like, you can find deals on the market. You know? <laughs> like I sent this to my friend yesterday, $189,000 duplex in New Orleans in a pretty decent part of town. I was like, excuse me. And it's like foreclosure, right? But there are, there are so many good deals that are actually out there on the market. You just need to know what to look for, okay? And if you are struggling to like analyze deals, you're like, okay, I know I want to do this, but I just like don't really know like how to actually run the numbers. Feel free to like, you can go and like sending this to you for free. You don't have to pay anything. Either go on Instagram and DM me the word, word calc, or you can type in, like take a picture of it right now and you can type in that uh, link and I'll send you my free, like it'll automatically send you my free calculator. You can go ahead and get it, use it for whenever, like it's yours, download it, download yourself, copy, use it for properties, okay? And if you need a lender too, Theoni, she's my girl. She has been able to get so many people loans, especially if like in situations where you think they're not going to get it. So like, feel free to 
Thank you so much, Samantha. You're fabulous. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> um, but feel free to reach out to her as well. Let's say you want to get pre you're like, I know I'm ready, need to get started. Feel free to reach out to her. She can get you pre-approved. Okay. So I am literally still like, guys, I literally got under contract on this property two days ago, <laughs> two days ago. I haven't even shared it with my Instagram yet, <laughs> but it's a luxury house hack. So it's a seven bedroom house, two bed, two bath basement that I'm going to live in because I'm single. I live with my dog and the basement's great. And then the top is a five bedroom, four bath house that I can actually go and rent out. And it's going to cover all of, it's going to cover the mortgage. It's going to cover all my living expenses, even in an expensive market like Colorado. Okay. So yeah, like I like I screenshotted my um, text message with my realtor from two days ago, <laughs> but like this still works even in expensive markets. However, yes, in expensive markets, you do need a bit more cash, although you can still honestly go NACA too <laughs> um, if it is your first property. But I also understand that if you are living in a pricey market like San Francisco, like LA, like New York, Seattle, Denver, maybe, you know, buying a higher price property just isn't going to work out for you. You're like, I just can't do this. I totally get that. I hear you. I understand you. So who here, is there anyone here living in like Seattle or San Francisco or LA or New York or anything like that? Yep. Because Danielle, you're in uh, Seattle, right? And then Oakland. Yep. Yep. Seattle. I don't know if they have NACA in Canada, but I do know that they have other loan opportunities. Like I have, well, we can chat about it at the end, but we'll go, feel free to ask a question at the end, at the end, and we can go over it. But yes. So I've got a lot of students also in the Wonderless Wealth Academy. That's my program who are in expensive market. They're in New York, they're in Seattle. And some people have the money to purchase there. Some people don't, and that's totally okay. And some people just feel more comfortable going to a lower price market. So the other strategy that I just see working super, super well for newbies is long distance investing either doing the long-term, short-term, or MTR strategy, but long-distance investing is such in much cheaper markets is such a great way to get started. So long-distance investing literally just means investing in a property that is not in the same physical location that you're in. Like maybe you're in Seattle and you're like, I'm going to invest in Ohio or upstate New York or wherever that looks like, okay? <laughs> now this could be another city. It could be another state. It could even be another country. I will say I do recommend if you're just getting started, try and buy a property like in your country first because it's going to be way easier, number one, for you to get a loan. It's going to be way quicker for you to get a loan and get the bull rolling. As much as I love and I haven't purchased in a different country yet, it's my next year adventure. <laughs> but it is and like part of the reason I haven't is just like at the time, my goal was cash flow. My goal was freedom. My goal, what, you know, so how are we going to get there? You really want to think about what's going to get you there the fastest. Um, so great way to diverse your, diversify your assets and even purchase like a vacation house. Or if you live in a region where real estate is costly, just purchase a property that is affordable. Okay. How many of you want to buy out of state, but you have no idea where to buy? or not even out of state, but like out of your city, like want to buy something long distance because your places maybe, you know, you can't really find anything, but you want to, okay, yeah, yep, awesome. So these are markets right now. You can literally take a screenshot, write it down. Also, you guys will get the recording. These are some markets where with purchase prices below 200K, okay? You got Detroit. Now, some people like investing in Detroit, some people don't. The thing is, you are always going to find people who like investing in a certain area and who don't like. Everyone's going to have a horror, for every horror story, there's a success story. Just know this. So you've got Detroit, you've got Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Alabama is one that like a lot of my students are looking into. I've got people who purchased in Oak Hill, West Virginia, in Cleveland, Ohio. There are markets out there where you can buy properties for way less, okay? Now, note, just one thing to note, like with these properties, you're really thinking about cash flow. You're not really thinking about appreciation as much just because these properties aren't going to appreciate like in some of those most expensive markets. But if the goal is to replace your income, if the goal is to get out of your corporate job, or if the goal is to supplement your business income, you know, this might be the method that you want to go. So this is Jocelyn. She texted me like, when was this? This was three, four, I think five days ago. Under contract, found a three bedroom, three bathroom for $183,000. I offered 180K, counted with 181K. Like, this is how, and she lives in New York. And she was like, I cannot, I cannot purchase in New York, right? So we were like, okay, 
let's look at markets. Where can it work for you, right? Instead of thinking, I can't do this, always think, how can I make it work for me, okay? Now, the biggest tip for choosing a market Invest where you ideally have some sort of a competitive advantage. For example, Jocelyn, she was looking in North Carolina because she knows the area really well. She has family over there. She is aware of what it looks like over there. Like, do you know any other investors in that market? So the great thing about joining like investment groups, right? You can invest where someone else is investing. I know I went to invest in Virginia. I've never been to Virginia before, guys. <laughs> it's like literally never stepped foot in Virginia, but I knew other people investing there. And I was like, okay, well, I can use their cleaner. I can like leverage their thing. They were doing pretty well. Let me go to where they are, right? Um, Have you been maybe going on vacation there for years and know it and like it like the back, you know, you know it like the back of your hand? Or maybe can you partner with someone you know in that market? Maybe you know a real someone who's doing real estate in a certain market and you're like, you know what? Let me just buy where they're buying, right? Because they've got it figured out. Let's, let's like piggyback on top of that. <laughs> the biggest thing that people mess up when investing out of state or in a different place is not having a good boots on the ground team. So it's real estate agent, it's cleaners, it's handyman. It's like having that team is so freaking critical. And like, for example, within the Wonderless Wealth Academy, we help you find the real estate agent. We help you find those people that are actually gonna help you throughout your journey. So who here actually likes to travel? And I would think like probably if you follow me, I would think a lot of you. <laughs> So drop it in the chat. Who likes to travel? <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Me too, guys. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm going to be spending like the whole month of October in Argentina for my birthday. I'm very stoked about that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So for travelers, let's take this a step further. When you actually own property, because this is hard to do when you're renting, right? You can rent out your own space while you're traveling. So I'm actually currently in Denver. I'm staying in a place that's not mine for literally $200 for 14, 16 days <laughs> like, because I'm able to do things like, and we'll, we'll go over that a little, but like home exchanges and rent out my place. So the great thing about renting out your place while you're traveling is your house is going to sit empty anyways. So you might as well get all your bills and mortgage paid for, okay? <laughs> like might as well give it, give it to someone to actually use it, right? The extra money could pay for your entire trip while you're traveling. I remember I like traveled um, for a couple months and that paid for like my whole trip to Italy, you know? Um, some of your expenses for your own personal home also now become tax write-offs and you're just providing extra housing for folks. Like for me, it's like the house is sitting empty anyways, might as well put it to good use, okay? So this was like April, 2024. I like pulled up my numbers. Um, I traveled and it's so funny. So I like put myself in as a booking so that my cleaners know. <laughs> Uh, that's why you've got Olivia Tati here. Um, but in the month of April, I made an extra $4,000 just renting out my house while I was traveling. Like who wouldn't love an extra four? Like, and I didn't have to do anything extra. It, the house was already there, right? And like in my programs, we have like how to actually set up your place properly, all of that stuff. But like, that's a good extra chunk of change, you know? <laughs> now, this is a lot easier to do once you actually own your home already, okay? So yeah, so this is right now, I'm actually staying here, $250 for 14 nights in Denver. I'm going to London, literally staying right next to, if anyone has been to London. I was actually born in the UK. I don't sound like it. My brother sounds fully Amer uh, British. I sound American because I left at the age of nine. Um, but I'm going to London for my cousin's wedding, staying like in my own place right by Hyde Park, which is one of the best parts of London, for $200 in total for 10 nights. Guys, usually that would be like $500 a night. <laughs> So this is where real estate can get so fun and so interesting once you actually own your properties, okay? Um, there's so many ways to maximize your home. You can rent it on Airbnb. You can do house sitting or pet sitting. You can do house swapping. You can check Nomad Facebook groups or opportunities. You can do tour or peers. There's so many different things out there, okay? And the beautiful thing is if you have your system set up correctly, because that's what I'm all about. I'm like, I need to be able to, like, my first property, even though it was a duplex, even though I lived on the other side, <laughs> I set up my other unit so I wouldn't, I would be able to, try, like, I remember, I think I put my listing live from Costa, I flew to, like, I spent two weeks getting my property set up, painting walls, doing all this stuff, and then I flew to Costa Rica and put the property live in Costa Rica because from the get-go, I knew that I wanted my property to be able to run itself without me there. And then for the next four months, even when I came back home, I didn't go into the other side because my systems were there. 
So things that you want to think about are property management software. I like to use hospitable dynamic and like everyone in the program, you get like the links for everything and all that stuff, but dynamic pricing tool, cleaner management tool, Wi-Fi locks um, that actually sync up and create separate codes for like, so that you don't have to be doing it manually. Your boots on the ground team that we were talking about before your cleaner, your handyman, any other contact info service providers. So <laughs> here's the thing. I posted this on threads, I think a few, a couple of weeks ago, and it went like mini viral as I said, is there anyone here who has seriously regretted investing in real estate? Overwhelming, no. <laughs> like literally overwhelming, no. Like people mainly saying I should have started sooner. And that's how I feel. And I, I started pretty young. Like I started as like a 26, 27 year old, you know? <laughs> and that's where I'm like, you like I have students in my program who were 23, 24 getting started. And I'm like, gosh, you guys, you don't realize how impactful that's going to be in your future. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like, for example, this was Devlin that I was talking about before, who's like, literally, she went to go see her potential third property um, this week. So I'm excited to hear back from her, but she's making an extra $2,600 a month from one of her properties. Or um, Liz here, she's cash flowing an extra $1,000 a month by buying in upstate New York. She just, cl she's closing on a property like this month at some point here soon should have been like earlier this month, but you know, closing got delayed, but that's okay. <laughs> but so the third thing that I see is holding people back is mindset. Okay. Now I have been literally exactly where you are. I was fed up. I was over it. I was, like I said, I was in $25,000 worth of credit card debt. Like guys, I was delusional thinking that in a year I'd be able to pay off all my debt and buy a property. But I did it because of the mindset portion, but I understand where it feels like it's like everything's so expensive. I can't find anything. I can't find a property. This is where the mindset portion comes into play. Okay. The problem is, is that you're going at it alone. Okay. You don't know where to start. There's no clear action plan. There's no personalized support. And there's just like analysis paralysis, right? Who, who here has been in analysis paralysis? I know I have been before, you know? <laughs> So the fastest way to success is to actually find someone who has been successful and model their behavior, right? You need a proven process. You need feedback. You need consistency. And you need to know, most importantly, your why, right? Like, it is so important because that is what's going to keep you coming back. And that's what's not going to let you fail, okay? So wouldn't it be better if someone could actually hold your hand along the way and you get that clear roadmap on how to actually get started investing in real estate, a network of experienced investors, people to weigh decisions on, and just a supportive community to help you overcome it. Like a lot of this energy, right? <laughs> overcome those limiting beliefs and those fears that might be holding you back. So these are just some testimonials from some of my students in the Wonderless Wealth Academy. And it's crazy because it's things from like real estate to just money things. Like for example, Cyan, I remember she joined the coaching program in December and like within two weeks had paid off her, like all of her debt fully within two months had saved up an extra $10,000 for her first property. I was like, let's freaking go. Right. Or like Malia, she got under contract within two weeks <laughs> of joining WWF. I was like, what is happening? This is amazing. Right. Or Devlin, who I've talked about before. Um, and then we got Kat who, uh, Kat, I remember was freaking out to me because she was like, I can't find anything. I can't find anything. And it was like working through that, really figuring out your strategy. Got She closed last week or yeah, it was either, no, it wasn't yesterday. It was last week on Friday, <laughs> you know, and really just having that supportive community that is going to take you to the finish line. So I am inviting you to book a free Wonderless Wealth Academy info call with me. Now, this free info call is going to be for the Wonderless Wealth Academy. So if you're interested in real estate investing, you know it's in your future, but you need a clear idea of what to do when you're ready to buy, or you maybe you're ready to buy. You're like, I'm looking and I'm just struggling and I need that support system. Like, come through, book a call. So the Wonderless Wealth Academy, for the first 10 people that book a call, and these usually go very quickly, you guys get 25, like this is like the lowest, lowest price that I ever give for the Wonderless Wealth Academy. You guys are going to be getting 25% off. Um, and in the program, you know, there's group coaching calls every single week. There's at least two group coaching calls, monthly accountability calls. You get personalized deal analysis reviews. So we actually look at your deals with you, make sure it's a good deal, give her feedback get the supportive community. And also if you can't make the calls, you do get the cool recordings as well. But then you also for free, get the whole Wonderless Wealth Academy course. So this video course you get for life, literally for life. You have it, every single part of it. Um, so even if you're done with the Wonderless Wealth Academy and you're off doing your own thing, but you like, you know, there's something you want to go back and look and you still get that fully.
But then also on top of that, you get these incredible bonuses around money and mindset, the wealthy rate and roadmap. If it's something about like paying off debt or saving up for your next investment property or the Jet Set Invest playbook. So that is coming. That's my big travel hacking one. Um, how to, I know someone mentioned that travel is like their biggest expense. I get it. That's why that's in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, the bonuses don't only go until June 28th eighth at midnight so friday thursday thursday at midnight either thursday or friday at midnight um but the for only the first 10 people get 25 percent off and i'll actually put the link here in the chat if i can find it that way if you can't take a picture of it here you go but yeah, feel free to book. That's a completely free call with me, even if it's just going over your strategy. Also seeing if you're a good fit for the Wonderless Wealth Academy. Would love to have you. And if not, that's totally okay. I just want you to get started. Okay, guys, I want you to get started. I want people to stop sitting on the sidelines because here's the thing. Everyone waits until something catastrophic happens. Maybe you lose your job or someone is in the hospital or something like that. Let's not wait until the catastrophe happens and actually take your life into your own hands. Okay. So that is it for today. We are going to open up for Q and A. Feel free to come through. You can put your hand up and then I'll call on people, answer any questions, go over everything. So, and don't forget to book the call. Only the first 10 people get 25% off. I think we actually just got, yeah, just got, just got a good. So go in there and book fast because I know those book up fast, but who has any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to put your hand up and we can go ahead and do a Q and A. And this can be about anything. Nothing's off limits. It's, it's about real estate investing, strategies, anything. Sarah, go for it. Hey, um, that was really great. Really informative. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just, I'm just curious because um, I'm the Canadian girl um, and I was wondering what options that you had. Um, or that you know about in terms of getting started and the loan uh, options that are that are available and stuff. Yeah. So where in Canada are you? I'm in Alberta. Okay. And I'm pretty, Alberta's, that is, how expensive is Alberta? Um, Alberta's probably one of the lower um, provinces for house costs. So amazing. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. So what I would actually do, and if you want to book a call, like I can actually set you up with my Canadian real estate investor friend who's done exactly this. So she got started house hacking. I, off the top of my head, do not know the Canadian loans just because I don't, I've never had to use them, but I know she has, so I can, I'm happy to put you in contact with her. But then another option too, is if you did want to go out of state, you can use like conventional financing, honestly, to get a property like in a different, like, let's say it's in the US or whatever that looks like as well. But yeah, send me a DM or or book a call and we can actually, um, I'll, I'll set you up and you can chat with her. Does that okay, sound good? Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. And I see Nikki, fourplex versus sixplex. Okay, so these are actually two completely different asset classes. Fourplex is small multifamily. Sixplex is actually com considered commercial. So anything five units and above, you're doing commercial. So you can't actually use stuff like an FHA loan. You can't use conventional loans. You're actually gonna have to get commercial financing for that. So some people still do it. Like you can still do uh, house hacking if you wanted to, or you just do the commercial, do it the commercial way. The cool thing about commercial, I will say, is that the property value is not gonna be valued on like comps in the area. It's gonna be valued based off of the revenue that you can bring in. So you can really optimize your properties um, by going commercial. Does that answer your question, um, Nikki? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Amazing. Um, let's see. Do you have any clients who do multi generational living in a duplex to house hack? Any? Okay. What do you? Can you? If you want to get off of, I'm not sure if iPhone four, whoever you are, <laughs> if you want to get off of mute and just like, just I guess explain to me exactly what you're trying to do. Yeah. Hi. Thank you hi. so much. Yeah. Um, so I'm considering buying something with my parents, a duplex most yep. likely in the next year or so. We're in San Francisco. So multi-generational living, house hack situation. And I'm just curious if you have any other clients who have done something similar, any advice you so have for them, especially in a high cost of living area. By multi-generational living, do you just mean that you and your parents are going to be living in the property? 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we'd be yeah. in one unit and they'd be in another. So I would highly recommend the more units, the better. So if you can go for a triplex or like a quasi fourplex, something where it's like, it's technically a triplex, but you can like make it into a fourplex just because that way you can get more income coming in, right. To cover costs. Um, the way that you're going to have to do like the other units, like I would split them, like split the mortgage or expenses between y'all. Do you guys already know like how you want to structure the deal yet? Or is that still like a confusing? No, no, okay. we don't. I'm open to you thoughts should, there as well. Yes. There's various different ways to do it. Um, you can either create an entity or if you're like family, you don't have to, this is something like we go in, it's, it's, a case by case basis. <laughs> so it depends on what your like situation is like with your family. For example, I um I've partnered on a couple of properties with different people. However, with my family, like we don't create a separate entity just because whatever they get and whatever I get is is ours, right? And we're totally fine with that. However, I know some people who would rather put everything in an LLC and all of that. So you can do that as well. I've done that and like in the program we have like um, documents that people have used and edited it for themselves in order to actually like write up these agreements. The reason I say is like, it depends because it really does depend, especially also where you're located, like how you're going to structure that. And like we bring in lawyers sometimes and bringing other, other people who have partnered just so you can understand how you want to partner it. Like, do you want to do an equity split? Do you want to do a cash flow split? Like how, who's going to be managing it? So these are all things that you kind of really want to outline whenever you are doing a partnership. Does that make sense? I know that was yeah, a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. I haven't thought about that. So thank yes. you. I absolutely, absolutely, girl. <laughs> um, could you explain NACA? Yes. Yeah, so NACA is government funded. Um, it's like National Association of something, something. I, you know, don't don't quote me on the, the actual acronym. <laughs> but it's a really cool product. So you can actually buy a property for 0% down, 0% in closing costs, and they'll even cover um, renovations. Now, every loan, you know, every loan has some sort of like a small catch, right? So for example, with NACA, technically you have to like, you have to be living in the property. It has to be your first property that you're purchasing, like your primary residence. Um, and I think it's like, if it's still under a NACA loan, you still have to technically be living in the property. However, what a lot of people do is they'll just refinance it into a conventional loan, like a couple of years later. So that way you can then like house hack again and do it on the next property. So it's a really cool product. You do have to jump through a little bit more hoops. So like if your finances are not like in place really well, like it, let's say you have literally like, I don't know, like $50,000 of debt, you're probably not going to qualify for NACA because they do want to see that you're at least keeping track of your finances. It's not like you have to have a ton of money in the bank or anything. Like I think my, some of my students have like, you know, $10,000 in the bank, um, but they do want to see that you're responsible with your money and you understand budgeting. So they will literally like, it's kind of invasive, but they will go through all of your bank statements and all of everything and make sure that you're following like, a. but, but it's a really great product for anyone who is struggling with that or who is like getting into like personal finance and all of that stuff, because it forces you to be better with your money. It forces you to. So I always recommend it to, especially like if you're just getting started. It is such a great, great product. Um, when people join your course, how long before they purchase? Yeah, so it totally depends. It's different for everyone. I have students who have purchased within two weeks. I have a lot of, I'd say the average is within a month. Some people take longer, right? Some people take four months. Some people take six months. Everyone's situation is very different. So I don't really have like a, you're going to purchase by this date. The goal is to get your property within three months. Um, But you, it's also, it's all about what you put in, right? Like, if you don't attend any of the calls, if you don't ask any questions, right? Like there's no way it's, it's a give and take. So if you're ready to put in the work and put in the effort, like we will get you to the finish line. <laughs> okay. Priscilla, I know you have your hand raised. Sure. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Hi. Yes. I don't know if you remember me. I met you at the, um, the, the MTR summit in San Diego. Oh, fabulous. Yes. Um, Nicole's friend. I'm Nicole's friend. Yeah. Oh, my um, gosh. Amazing. Hi. Um, so I um, I have so many options, I guess. So I already have one property that I yep. was my, I guess I did like the Burr where yep. I lived in it. It was my primary residence, but my family grew and I was like, we need a bigger house. So then I MTR'd it. 
and I got an insurance claim, which I believe ends in September. And so the cash flow with that, I've been using it to offset my current mortgage because yep. interest rates are so high. But mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to be proactive in like trying to get another, you know, contract right after. But also it's like, I, I feel like I'm stuck because I have, like, I could pull that equity from that rental to get another property. But I'm like, what if I don't get another contract and then I can't offset my new mortgage? So I feel like I'm stuck. Like, I can't do anything because I'm like, what if this and what if that and what if. So there was another property that came on the market and it was like down the street from where my current residence is, but it's more in a historical neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it's um, a lot of the houses that are there, they STR them because they're right off the highway. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that just because of like the high turnover and I don't have the time to like, the time to, like the cleaners, the cleaners, do all that. But um, it, that property that came available, I know that it would require a lot of, um, what is it called? renovations mm -hmm. like it probably it like needs all new windows because it has like the original like 1972 yeah. single windows it doesn't have ac so i need to put ac so i'm like i don't even think it's worth it to get that yeah. house so it's all a numbers game um and so I, I know there was a couple of things so i if you haven't already i would honestly recommend just like booking a call <laughs> because there's a lot of like little nuances and details in there right um yes. first off the what ifs right that's all a mind game. That's all a mindset thing, right? That we would work through in order to get through that. Because every what if has a solution. Every what if has a, okay, but what if it went the other way? You know? <laughs> yes. Um, right? Uh, because you have equity, you said you have equity in your current property, right? Correct. So My rental if, property. Yeah. Okay, in your rental property. Okay, yeah. So I was going to say, if it was your primary residence, then doing a HELOC on a renovation would be a phenomenal way to do it since it's not your primary residence. Actually, one of my students, she just found a lender who can do a HELOC on an investment property, which is awesome because most lenders won't. So that is an option, which I would only do for a renovation project. I wouldn't do just to like buy a, buy a property and not do any renovations on it because you'd want to kind of burr it and get that money back off and pay the HELOC off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So that would be that would be the strategy that I, I'd go since you have equity sitting in your property. Mm -hmm. Cause what's your interest rate on that? 2.99. <laughs> yeah. You you definitely don't want to refinance. Let's not refinance that. Let's like no. see if we can pull a HELOC. <laughs> yeah, no, my my intention was to do the HELOC because I when I initially bought it, it was like five point one two and I already refinanced it back in twenty twenty. So that's how yeah. I got the two point nine nine. So I'm yeah. like, I don't want to touch it. No, but my spouse is like, no, we have to sell it. I'm like, no, you're crazy. You just need to stay in your lane. <laughs> well, um, so it depends. It depends. If you can find a better deal that is going to give you more cash flow, that's going to give you more appreciation, right? Then yeah, go for it. But it's it, that's why it always depends. It's all about the numbers. Do the numbers make sense? And that's what we're always focused on is like, everyone wants a 2.9% interest rate for sure. But if you've got a 2.9 interest rate, but you're only cash flowing like a couple hundred dollars and you can put it into something else and cash flow $3,000, I'm going to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, my prop, my rental property is cash flowing $1,650. That's great. That's wonderful. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just like, no, I, I definitely want to keep it. I mean, my, in, my mortgage is only $1,000 at that property. So it's yeah. like, and I lowballed the rent because I was like panicking because I hadn't gotten anything off Furnish Finder, I think for like maybe a month. And I was like, oh my God. So I kept lowering the price. And then sure enough, an insurance claim came, you know, miraculously my way. But all right, I appreciate all the information. And yes, Absolutely, I think girl. I'm going to book that call. Absolutely. Wonderful. Amazing. Okay, Danielle. Yay. Hi. Hey, girly. Hey. <laughs> hi. hi. Okay. I have. <laughs> I think two, maybe three questions. I, okay, I think I have it. a similar question what Samantha has. So I'm going to kind of loop her question into mine, but Samantha probably has the same question as me. Um, one is I own, as we know, an S corp. And so I was thinking about buying property as a corporation, or I was kind of curious, do I need to buy an LLC? Samantha is like, I already have an LLC. Like, how do I set that up better? Um, and the reason why is because I want to be able to separate as in, these are investments. I want to be able to separate that thing out. So yeah. 
if I already have an S corp, is this a smart idea to buy these underneath my business or should I set up a separate LLC or should I say, yeah, fuck it, do so personal? I, I personally would just go personal for your first couple. Um, okay. the, and the reason for that is, especially if it's, if, especially if you're buying as a primary residence, but even if it's just one, like you're going to have to be paying so many, cause I went the route. I was like, oh, I'm going to set up all these LLCs. And I'm like, yeah. God, there's so much freaking paperwork. <laughs> You know, and now I'm like filing taxes here, filing taxes there. So it becomes like a bit of a more of a mess. Mm -hmm. Um, And you don't need it to be under an LLC. What you do need is insurance. The right insurance is going to cover your butt. But everyone thinks you need to purchase a property under an LLC. Unless you have like at least three properties, I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Okay, like, so just, it looks like yeah. Samantha might have three or four. So she might be in that thing. She has yeah. two. She set up two more. So she might be on that. I wouldn't mind having four or five or 10 at the end of the okay. day. So I'm kind of trying to do this as like a pre, like I already, because I already pay the corporate taxes I already pay. Like, mm -hmm. Right. So I'm already set up as a corporation. Yeah. I just kind of feel like, should I just continue that and do another segment and another escort? Cause I'm already have the account tax and I already have, I have, I'm already in the middle of tax. That's hell fair. Already. That's fair. Yeah. So in that right. case, I would probably, if you can't, I, so you're going to want to do it separately from your, um, what is it? Your cash flow business. Okay. So like from, okay. you you want to do it separately just because you're going to be offsetting. Like when it comes to taxes, you want your passive income to be separate than your active income. That's going to make it way okay. easier for your CPA. And I'm pretty sure that's to be also, I'm not a CPA guys. Yeah. Do not like, <laughs> you know? no, just, so, well, these are just things that I'm like, what, how am I going to do? Like, I, I was just like, I already have a C corp. Is that better for me to do like, just do it that way um, to make yeah. it easier. Okay, so I think that uh, that might be a question inside of the group and stuff like that to ask as well. But it looks like get same Samantha's like same get all the properties. So we're, <laughs> apparently Sam and I are about buying all the properties. So I that's what we're looking at doing. So we want to set it up right in the beginning. We're probably the same. Yes. I don't know Sam, but maybe we're the same that way. That is fair. That is fair. Yeah. Then go ahead and just I would do a separate LLC for okay. it. Okay, that and would I, be your advice. Yes. Okay. The second thing is, um, I love the idea of house hacking, but I hate people and I don't want to live next door to anybody <laughs> ever again. So I'm very curious about these luxury house hackings. That sounds nice because they can have like separate out. I like these yes. new home things. I like that, but is there a way to have cash flow and not house hack? Can I just buy properties and yes. rent them maybe midterm or something and still have cash flow? Yeah. Um, and I that's just where you're myself looking... in the butt on that. No, no. That's where you're going to look at those like less than $200,000 properties. Okay. Or okay. like, and it's not even, you don't, you, you can also go short-term rental. Like I love short-term rentals. That's like my yeah. bread and butter. I've done midterm rentals. I have students doing long-term rentals. I know how to do all of them. Obviously short-term rentals is cash flow. Okay. Short-term so, is cash flow. Yeah. Okay. Short-term rental. You're just going to get better cash flow. It is a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but especially yeah. if you join the program, you get all my systems. So okay. I literally teach you how to set it up. So it's less of a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay. I like that idea too. Um, I'm going to ask you two more questions. I'm so sorry, but I go just got me on here and nobody else has their hand raised. So, um, and I know we have to go too. one. Um, the other question somebody brought up to me today, she says, well, will you go get a real estate license? Is that because you don't, just had that beginning. Do you suggest that or no? No, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I got it because it was like training wheels for me and I was in debt, okay. right? So I was like, I need to pay off my debt. Why don't I like get paid to learn, you know? Okay. Um, it's definitely not necessary unless you actually want to. So I don't use my real estate license anymore except for referrals, um, okay. which is great because it's like a, another passive stream for me. But the only reason I can I even get, because everyone's like, oh, I want to do referrals. The only reason I can get referrals is because I'm so in the real estate community. Okay. Everyone knows me, everyone, right? So like, I think a lot of people are like, well, I'm going to get my real estate license to become a referral agent, but they don't know anyone in real estate and they haven't positioned themselves as, as a real estate, like, you know, expert or anything like that. Okay. So. Um, and then my final question, because I might've missed it. Yes. How much is your academy? Did I miss that? Because I want to know what 25% off of whatever that number is, or do we have to make the call to find out? Yes, make the call, join, just because I want to make sure like yeah. we're bringing in the right people in. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Just making sure that I didn't miss a number somewhere. And I was like, wait. Totally. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's all my questions. And if I didn't Amazing. get your Samantha, raise your hand or whatever or something. And so. Yeah. And I okay. see a side question here about NACA on multifamily. Yes, you can use it on up to a fourplex. Which is crazy, honestly. Like I'm, if I if I knew about NACA years ago, <laughs> I would have gone NACA. Okay, Priscilla, I know you've had your hand up for a while. Oh no, I already went. Oh, okay, okay. We'll put your hand down. 
Um, and then Samantha, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to keep piggybacking off of Danielle's train of thought. Yes. So we had landed at Danielle and I are both going to own the block. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. So we both have S Corps and LLCs, cash flow business, keep that separate. Got it. Keep I it currently separate. own two homes with, that are not under an LLC. So you said mm -hmm. next thing then is LLC. So then is it an LLC for every property? No, no, you don't want to do that. So if you uh, do, you own your properties by yourself. I own them 50, 50 with a partner. Okay. So those with your partner, you probably want to put those in an LLC with your partner. If you're going to now buy a separate one with Danielle, let's say, or, or whoever, then you buy those under a different LLC, but keep partners in the same LLC and put the same, put your the properties in that same LLC. There's no, there's really no need to get like other LLCs for each property. You're, you're going to okay. give yourself a headache doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So something that I've heard, but I, I do a... recommend getting separate bank accounts per property. And like, if okay. you guys haven't heard of relay, it's a really great one that's able to do that. Oh, okay. No, that's good. Cause that kind of preempts one of my other questions. So, um, Oh shoot. And I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, 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 you're good. Cause that's good information to have. So single LLC, different bank accounts for each property. Ah, yes. So one of the strategies that we've considered is HELOCing our primary residence mm -hmm. because it is over 50% paid off and there's solid equity in it. It's yep. California. Um, yep. I love it. So, um, then with that, we would then use that HELOC money for down payments on future multi-unit buildings and then like move that over. Like, I guess. So I, I would use the, 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 um, like where does the business start and we end? So I would use, I would only use a HELOC for short-term debt. I wouldn't use it to be sitting in a property for 30 years. Um, because a HELOC, think of a HELOC, like a credit card. So you want to, if you're going in and you're doing renovations, you are like fixing something up and then you can pull that equity back out and then put that back into your HELOC. That is what you want to do. The, your HELOC is there for you to go and like scale quickly so you can keep recycling that money. You don't want it sitting in a property for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't recommend using that as a cash flow account? Like what putting it into a down payment and then having the rent pay that off you could it depends on how fast <laughs> okay like yeah it depends on how much cash flow and how much you're taking out so if you're like okay yeah i mean i can get it paid off in like a year and a half to two years because remember that also puts you in a bind if you ever want to sell your primary right mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind like and this is where so i kind of did a similar thing with my 401k so when i quit i rolled my old 401k into a new 401k but i had to keep my old 401k open with like a hundred dollars in it because otherwise it was going to trigger the um 401k loan to be re have, have like me having to completely pay the 401k loan back so like think about it if you sell if you let's say you wanted to move your from your primary and maybe you don't who knows but you just never know right and so you would have to pay that back off. So you'd make, have to make sure that you have enough cash flow from that to pay that HELOC off and then sell your primary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I say like, usually it's best used for short-term debt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I will let other people hug the mic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any, let me see if there's any other ones that I haven't answered in here. La 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 la. So we talked about escorts, we talked about LLCs, finding capital. Yes, there's so many ways to find capital, either through partners. There's like literally so many ways, like retirement funds, partners, like there's and even not even your own retirement funds. <laughs> like so, so many ways to do that. Um, okay. Um, same, get those properties, yada, yada, yada. Great hearing, blah, blah. blah. Goal is to pay up. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a year. It's just like, depending on the terms of your HELOC, you just want to keep that in mind. So, cause with the HELOC, I always think of it like if I'm going in and doing a renovation and ideally it takes less than, sometimes it might take more than a year. It could be two years or five years or whatever, but I don't want it. I'm not putting it as a down payment usually, unless I know I can refi. Like, let's say you're buying a property, you need it for a down payment and for rehab, and then you're going to refinance out of it and replace all of that anyways, then sure. Yeah, do it. Right. But 
So you're, you're always thinking, if you're using a HELOC, always thinking, uh, think of adding value, basically. Like you want to add value to the property so you can pull that money out. Yes. Okay, pulling. Yes. Um, and honestly, I also don't entirely know how, and this is where you'd have to get the, with the lender to see how to actually get a heat, like some sort of a HELOC or whatever from your actual, like if your home is fully paid off, you'd have to, you might have to potentially refinance and get like a small bit of debt so that you can pull it out. That might be something you have to look into, but talking to the lender and they'll be able to tell you exactly how that works. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Any other questions? This has been wonderful. I love chatting with everyone. Thank you for coming with so many great questions and being interactive the entire time. This was so fabulous. <laughs>